There's a handful of mistakes that I see a lot of sellers making at the moment where they're either leaving money on the table or they're putting themselves in a position where they're not gonna be able to actually sell their home. Now, if you're a home buyer watching this video, you should pay attention as well because by understanding the things that I'm talking about as a listing agent, it can actually put you in a better position to negotiate if the seller is doing any of the things that we're gonna talk about in this video. Now, the very first thing I wanna talk about is one of the most obvious things, and that is overpricing your home. We're currently in a market with very, very low demand. Now, inventory is low, and what sellers are doing is thinking inventory is low, therefore, it's still a seller's market. Buyers are gonna pay me my price if they want to buy my home. And that might be true for some markets out there, but there is something that you need to consider. You're in a slower time of the year. Seasonality plays a part in selling your home. And right now, as we push towards the end of 2024, there are less home buyers out there in the market. So there's less buyer demand. In addition to that, we have mortgage rates sitting somewhere around 8%, which means even though you have buyers that are out there shopping, there's just less of them due to housing affordability. So while supply is really low, demand is also really low. So they're more or less in balance at the moment. So in order to help your home stand out, you really need to start by pricing it correctly. Because the one thing I can tell you in nearly 20 years of selling real estate is homes that sit on the market for any extended period of time start to get this stigma from potential home buyers out there that there's either something wrong with the house or it's severely overpriced. And while neither of those might actually be true, maybe you're just a little overpriced. A home buyer reads into that, especially as the home sits on the market and days on the market build. And if and when that buyer decides to make an offer, it's often reflected in a much lower asking price versus taking the approach from the get-go of maybe pricing it a little bit under what you think it's worth because of the market conditions, because there's less demand out there. Because I'm one of those agents that strongly believe that you still can't underprice a home in this market. Anytime a buyer perceives value in a home, then chances are another buyer is going to see the same thing and it's going to draw attention to that property, which in many cases can end up leading to a higher asking price. So don't be the seller that is stuck on your price. I'm not selling unless I get this price because I've been in contact with many of those sellers over my career. And what I can tell you is a lot of them capitulate over time and end up selling their home for less money than they could have otherwise if they had just priced it correctly from the start. In addition to overpricing, another thing that I'm seeing a lot in this market is the unwillingness to negotiate. And while I wanna talk about that in more detail, I wanna do it right after you hit that thumbs up if you find any value in my videos at all. And also do me a favor and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on tips like this along with mortgage, finance, and everything real estate related. So what do I mean by the unwillingness to negotiate? Well, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier. Hey, this is my price and if I don't get my price, I'm not willing to sell my house. Now, I believe as a seller, you should have a line in the sand, a price that you're not willing to go below. But at the same time, I don't believe that should necessarily be your asking price. If you have a line in the sand that is your asking price, then there's really no room to negotiate. And just like any other commodity out there, yes, I'm calling housing a commodity. That commodity is only worth what someone is willing to pay. And in some cases, it's more than the asking price. And in some cases, it might be a little bit below below the asking price, but giving yourself some flexibility to be able to come to an agreement puts you in a much better position as a seller. Now, I can honestly say, I've been in that position where I said, I'm not willing to even respond to that offer. It's too far below my asking price. In fact, I'm in the process right now of selling my home. It's in escrow and I'm buying another property. And one of the offers that we received, we ended up with four total offers, but one of the offers that we received was about $125,000 below the asking price. And quite frankly, I was offended, especially because I already had a full price offer on the table, a cash buyer in fact. So when I looked at that offer at 125,000 below the asking price, I thought, why would I even respond to this offer? And in this case, because I had another offer on the table, I didn't really feel the need to do so. In fact, I had another verbal offer at the full asking price as well, also another cash buyer. So the fact that I had two offers at my price, I didn't really feel the need to negotiate in this case, but at the same time, I've also been in the position where I've been representing sellers where there 
haven't been any offers on the table and we've gotten a lowball offer. In those cases, I think you need to respond to those offers, even if it's going back to your full asking price, just to show that buyer where you stand with regards to price. Now, in some cases, that buyer might not even respond. In other cases, the buyer might come all the way up to your asking price. In fact, I've had scenarios where buyers have offered significantly less than the asking price and then ended up coming all the way up to the full asking price once they've countered. So as a seller, have some willingness to negotiate, not only on the price, but when it comes to things like repairs and maintenance that's needed on the home. Because if you've lived in the property for any extended period of time, there's likely some things in the property that need to be maintained, even if you're taking care of the home. In fact, we can use me as an example. I knew there were things in my home that needed to be corrected. I've been in that home almost 11 years and I knew there were some things that needed to be done. And so when the home inspection came back and there were some things that came up, I wasn't really in shock. But one of the things that came up that the buyer wanted repaired was the electrical panel. Now, the interior panel on my house had been replaced, but the original panel had not. And so I could have said, no, I'm not willing to do that because I've been here for 11 years and that panel has served me fine. I'm not willing to negotiate. But at the same time, I knew that I wanted to close this deal. I knew I wanted to move forward and I knew the right thing to do was give a little bit because that buyer was giving a little bit on their side as well because they could have asked for more things. So just understand, even though it's still technically a seller's market, buyers really have the upper hand at the moment because of the muted demand out there in the market. So as a seller, you can be firm, but also be flexible at the same time. Now that leads me to actually talk about repairs and maintenance. Now, again, we'll talk about my property. I knew there were some things that needed to be done. There were some screens that needed to be replaced, some doors that were rubbing on jams, some GFI outlets that needed to be done. And so prior to ever putting it on the market, I went through the house and looked at the things that needed to be addressed and started the process of repairing them and or getting people in there to give me quotes, to give me an idea because I knew they were likely to come up in the inspection and those are things that the buyer would likely want repaired. So I went ahead and had those in my mind. I was already factoring them into my price because I knew they were likely to come up. Don't be the seller that's ignoring the obvious things out there. If you know there's issues in your home that would bother you if you were a buyer and you were buying a home, then those are things that you likely need to be addressed in the process. So prior to ever putting your home on the market, just walk through the home and look at the things that have been bothering you since you bought the home, the things that you haven't repaired, the jobs that you haven't finished, and kind of put those at the top of your list, things that need to be done, whether you decide to do them prior to listing the home or letting the buyer know that, hey, these things are going to be done, or maybe you do neither and just have them in the back of your head saying, hey, okay, if the seller asks for these, I'm prepared to do them because I know their potential issues. Now we can also talk about additional things about not preparing your home to sell, not decluttering, not staging, not doing some of the obvious things to make your home shine. And those are things that you should focus on. Those are things that your agent should be guiding you through the process. Hey, we need to do this prior to putting it on the market. You know, if it's a vacant home, we need some furniture in here to make it look nice. If there's a lot of stuff in the house, we need to declutter, we need to move this stuff out to make it show in its best light. And over the last couple of years, you've been able to get away with that. You haven't really had to do a lot to your property because of the lack of inventory out there in the high buyer demand. You've been able to just put your home on the market, sell it immediately, oftentimes for the asking price, if not higher, with multiple offers. Well, guess what? For most markets out there, that market has changed. So you now have to change your mindset when it comes to listing your home. So you might have to spend a little bit of extra money on staging or find an agent that will help you with that piece of the puzzle. You might have to dial in the curb appeal. You might have to paint the front door, do some of the basics because oftentimes these basics will end up putting more money in your pocket. And the last thing I wanna talk about is cutting corners as a seller. Now this can go a couple of different directions. The main one that I'm talking about today is hiring the agent, the real estate agent, that will sell your house for next to nothing just because you as the seller are looking to save money. Listen, we're all looking to save money in everything we do, but what I can tell you from nearly 20 years of selling real estate is that you get exactly what you hire. So if you're willing to hire the person that's cutting their commission, doing the job for nothing, that's also the person that's likely not a good negotiator, likely not going to do marketing, not going to expose your home, not going to help it shine in its best light, and ultimately not going to get you 
the highest offer price. Now I realize this is very self-serving coming from a real estate agent when I say this sort of thing, but understand when you hire a more professional agent, you're typically gonna pay a little bit more money, but that agent is going to pay for themselves in how they market that property, how they set you up for success to sell. You know, we often talk about exposure driving demand and demand driving price. That agent is going to expose your property to more people by doing different styles of marketing outside of just putting a sign in the yard and putting it on the MLS. You know, we all know a real estate agent because the barrier to entry to becoming a real estate agent is really, really small. So when you're thinking about the process of selling your home and maximizing price, also think from the perspective of say, going to the doctor or doing something else. Do you want the least expensive person out there or do you want the person that is a professional, maybe they're not charging at the top end of the spectrum, but they're providing value. And that's exactly what you want in the real estate agent that you're willing to hire. And as the market continues to shift and change, which it's going to, because rates are likely to stay a little bit higher for longer, demand is gonna drop off, prices are going to start to ease, days on the market are starting to build, so homes are gonna be sitting longer, you need somebody that knows what they're doing to guide you through that process. So don't make the mistake of cutting corners. Now, with that said, if you're currently in my market and you're looking to sell your home, I would love the opportunity to help. My contact information is actually in the description below. Maybe you're in another market across the US and you'd like a referral to an agent that does business like me. That referral link below will also get you in touch with someone that I know, like, and trust that can guide you through that process. The last thing I'll say is selling a home over the last couple of years has seemed like a really easy task. Like agents aren't worth the money they're being paid. What I can tell you is going forward over the next couple of months to years, as the market starts to shift, you're going to get exactly what you're paying for. So with that, you need an agent that can walk through all of the things that we talked about in today's video in detail, help you understand the process so that ultimately you can maximize the price when it comes to selling your home.